My beloved, the hour is coming, and now is, that the light of eternal life is to be permanently thine own. I speak of the cosmic cross of white fire that does mark the day and the hour of thy ascension. By the star of my causal body, yet shining over this place, I bring to you the joy of contemplation, of being assumed unto God in the ritual of the ascension. It is the glory to God in the highest that does bring peace and goodwill on earth. Blessed ones, know then that this hour which cometh draweth nigh quickly, for even a century is but a short time to satisfy all of the grace and the fullness of the law of God. O oh, my beloved, know then that the victory that is nigh must also be held tightly by thy hand lest no man take thy crown. The crown of life is won daily, and therefore there does come to all, step by step on the ladder of initiation, the opportunity to give, at first in small ways, which seem great, and then in great ways which seem small. For as one does ascend the spiral staircase, realizing the allness of God, one knows how small then, by comparison, must any sacrifice be for the gift of the return current is always the divine all. The saints of all ages unto whose hearts I have imparted this great and compassionate truth are they who are above you now, the immortals, yet it is not beneath them to walk by your side day upon day. Thus the ascended Lady Master, Therese of Lisieux, does make her way in your midst, consecrating the momentum of her mantle unto you, that you might know of a dearest friend and sister who has, since the hour of her ascension, mightily increased her mantle of sacred fire, and who does desire to give it unto each one. Therefore, she is never far from this place or the hearts who comprise now the forming diamond heart of Mary and Moria. This diamond heart, which consists of all those who give their life to the will of God, is surely the means whereby all people of good will upon earth might see and recognize that the Christ attainment is truly that open door of the hour. And I myself do offer it again. Therefore I say, come unto me, all ye who labor, who are heavy laden, both by the burden of the work and the light, and the word and the light of your own I am presence. Know then of the truth that those who bear the light in the body 
feel the weight of so great a salvation. It is the weight of the great central sun. It is the power of the allness and the omnipotence of God. It is a new kind of weight, beloved. It is a glorious weight, not as of gravity or of karma or of the laws of this plane. It is the rejoicing, oh, the burden of the Lord. Oh, the burden of the Lord. I am that I am. Thus I commend you to a path of joyous sainthood, not martyrdom. Let us speak of the joy of the seventh age and dispensation. Let us speak of the joy of angels. Let us speak of the joy of the heart, filling with the sacred fire, and of a body and a soul and a mind and a spirit becoming more and more the all in all. Thus the allness of the lesser self enters the great all, the allness of the greater self. And where does one leaf off and the next begin? O oh, beloved, when you are immersed in the all, when you are immersed in God, you are that one. And there is only one, and I am a part of that one. And my sacred heart in you shall be known henceforth and forevermore. As the diamond heart of God's holy will, this beloved, is the true bliss of heaven on earth until you know not whether you are in this or that plane, on earth or in heaven, for all of your life is filled with the presence, the omnipresence of love. A perpetual awareness of thy God is not far from thee, beloved, nor is sainthood only thy definition and circumscription of this way and path and word itself does keep thee from the fullness of that recognition within self. Lo, God in me is a saint of God. Which, by the way, does mean God in me makes me an issue of God himself. I am his life stream. I am his divine sending. Lo, I am of him. I have gone forth from him. But now I affirm, I am the undiluted self. I am the soul that has not lost her savor. I am the soul inspired by God. I receive it. I know it. I accept my fiery destiny in this moment. Oh, let the fiery destiny unveil thyself, beloved. It is a sweet song of angels and of seraphim and of the Elohim of God, which I would hear you sing ere the night is o'er. Now know, precious hearts, that to extend the cup of one's life is to surely have that cup filled with immortal life. Let not your heart be troubled, for I, Jesus, am confident by the very witness of my heart that the Christ of you, men and women and children, is able to fashion a diamond heart of God's holy will, whereby not one, not a few, but the many, as God does use the term many, shall identify by the blessed teaching of the law of the one with this one, 
with this one that is the I am that I am. Blessed hearts, what is the calling then of those such as Saint Therese who enter the order of the diamond heart? Truly it is to espouse the will of God and to set aside those goals which come after that central purpose of life. Let us understand that the most direct calling of God in this hour is to save America. Why America? Why the United States? Some vehemently object to this seeming preference Beloved, it is because this nation has the great endowment and sponsorship of Saint Germain, the greatest investment of light of the great white brotherhood in the experiment of freedom on earth. Therefore, to save America is to save a dispensation that has not been given to any other nation. To save America is to save the lost sheep of the 12 tribes of the legions of Sanat Kumara and to raise up such a Christ consciousness as will draw all light bearers of the earth. To seal and save this nation under God is to preserve opportunity for the victory in every other nation upon this planet. Let it be known then that if this nation be lost and sponsorship and dispensation be lost, no other shall be forthcoming to any other nation. For all upon earth have had 400 years and more to be aware of the great pulsating flame of freedom that has been anchored upon this continent and soil. Know then, beloved, that if America is lost, a generation, her youth, a government, a constitution, a vision, and the capstone of the pyramid itself, lo, beloved, not another cause, not another calling, not another destiny will remain to be pursued. How well I remember, for I moved amongst them, those who were galvanized in the Revolutionary War with its declaration of firmness and Christ purity against all encroachments upon the individual, sovereign free will of the sons and daughters of God. How they left their businesses their farms, their professions, their education, all to defeat the common enemy who would have enslaved this nation under another system and under its own crown. Again, beloved, the hour came, the hour to defend this nation against the encroachments of the international bankers. Thus, the one raised up as George Washington had been to lead those armies was none other than the son, Abraham Lincoln. And though he did fight to turn back those who came now not to control her soil, but her wealth and her abundant life, yet ultimately the cause to which he gave his life and for which he was also crucified did not prevail. Thus the taking over of a nation has come by the taking over of the minds of her youth and her people, her monetary system, even the gold standard as the Christ standard set aside. It has come about by the creeping, crawling serpents who have entered the halls of government at every level of the nation. The takeover from within, even that prophesied by that prophet and President Abraham Lincoln, 
is almost complete. Blessed hearts, this is the state of the nation and the state of the hour. Is it any wonder then that in answer to the heart's call of my messenger, what can I do? To what can I give myself to save America? I did respond and did respond with the profound teaching that one who has a life of Christ within may offer that life. But this has already been done by your messenger in her embodiment as Catherine of Siena, as in her 33rd year, the laying down of her life in the bearing of the burden of karma of the church, did buy for that holy church until the present hour the opportunity to continue. Thus, in the co-measurement of this, understand that the giving of one's Christhood and the giving of that momentum of the Alpha, the Omega, is such a sustaining grace and light in the hearts of the saints as to perpetuate entire civilizations by the sacrifice of the one or the few. Therefore, beloved, you may understand that good karma is on your side and hers. For having so passed through and already traversed this initiation, your messenger then has no requirement by cosmic law to lose her life, save in giving it in utterly in service. If, beloved, as my mother has told you, there are many who come forth to up the level of their sacrifice, to actually be and know that they are 24 hours a day, a portion of that diamond heart. Thus, beloved, to be a part of that order, one must know and give oneself in the mystery of surrender to the will of God. Many times preconceived notions of personal destiny do not allow one to see what is that holy and perfect will of God for one's life. Therefore, I commend you to the giving of the surrender rosary and the calls to the will of God. And I tell you to understand that no denial of that which is the fullness of thy life is required, but only a heightened vision as to exactly what is the fullness of that life plan, that divine plan of you and your beloved twin flame. Blessed hearts again, Sometimes a cosmic interval does sound as in the hour when in heaven that fallen archangel did take up sword against the living Son of God, only to be defeated by Archangel Michael and his hosts and to be cast down into the earth. Was there a disruption in the pursuit of the course of the will of God in that hour for all those of the great white brotherhood? I tell you, beloved, indeed there was. We did put aside all of our callings in God to defeat the adversary who did challenge the very path of Christhood unto the sons and daughters of God and all children and evolutions of the mighty root races. Thus these intervals, beloved, are just that as though time should stop, as though the great divine director or the referee should call time out and all of a cosmos does stand still while the sons of God and the hosts of the Lord do defeat the adversary of their God reality. What does this tell us then? It tells you that no time or space or eternity is lost. 
and that when you have fulfilled the defense of life and the right to be in heaven as on earth, on earth as in heaven, you do take up where you left off in this lifetime or the next, in this octave or another. God does not require you to forfeit your very special plans and purposes, but only to place in perspective that the hour does come when, if the course of civilization is to lock into the grid of light, and alignment with an ex-dispensation, those who are a part of that light must give the light they have to stop the onslaught of the dark ones who pursue that precipitation of the new dispensation to destroy it and the Christed ones before they are yet born out of the womb of the Cosmic Virgin. Thus, beloved, it would seem an inopportune hour that I was called at the age of 33 to give my life for the judgment of the watchers, the arch deceivers and highest ranking fallen angels in embodiment on earth who were in the Roman Empire who had infiltrated the highest ranks of Judaism and were elsewhere on the planet, not recorded in the history of that time. Blessed ones, I did give my life and I did take it again as prophesied and I did remain and move on in a glorified body that was yet physical to teach and preach to my disciples and to the world. Therefore know that my trial was for the judgment of these fallen ones. And as they did judge, so were they judged. Likewise it is so that when a city and a nation have placed on trial my messenger, it is they who have been on trial and all who have been the mouthpiece of death and darkness have themselves incurred their own judgment. Therefore, I speak of the Christ in you, of each and every one, and each babe who does sleep, while at inner levels they mightily strive in the spirit for the victory of nations. It is so of your Christ, beloved, as I said. For judgment I am come into this world, this is your fiat of the hour, beloved, and that judgment of the world through and by your Christ self is indeed the primary affirmation of the will of God for your life and purpose and daily service in this hour. Forget it not, because, beloved, the fallen ones do not forget. They know thee who thou art. Thou holy ones of God, they know. They know therefore that if you forget, they will not forget. And in your absence of alertness and memory of just who you are and why you are here, they seek to spring their traps to take advantage of you, to turn you aside, to make you feel self-condemnation, or to even engage in rivalry or competitiveness with one another. Blessed hearts, the Christ of you does affirm every hour, and you may hear your Christ self affirming it. For judgment, I am come into this world. These judgments include not only the judgment of the fallen angels and the exorcism of foul spirits that make up a part of the fabric of the earth, but beloved, these judgments are righteous judgments 
made for and on behalf of the children of the light, who have not the true shepherds, do not have the defenders, do not have those who will champion their cause. For judgment I am come into the world, the righteous judgment that does protect the innocent and those who are oppressed by the fallen angels yet in their seats of power. To protect the innocent, one must unseat these mighty from their seats. Let them go down, I say, and let them go down in the name of the keepers of the flame of Saint Germain. By the authority of your Christhood, so I am Jesus, and that Christhood, beloved, includes all of the light externalized, both your fiery spirit, which is that portion of the spirit of the I am that I am that dwells in your temple, and your soul, who is that portion of selfhood that descended from the great octaves of light and must now put on garments of consciousness and return to the heart of the Father, Mother, God as the pearl, the pearl of great price, because I and others have paid the price for you. The pearl of great price you are, for you have paid a great price to stand, face, and conquer your karma, your past misdeeds. And in your willingness to suffer for a while the burden of that karma, you will know now, sir, cease from it and see the dawn of a new day of opportunity. Be glad and rejoice that you have allowed yourself to bear your karma rather than to deny it, push it back and cast it aside. With intelligence and the intelling quality of wisdom, so with the violet flame, you can also make that suffering turn to joy and comfort in this hour, for the violet transmuting flame, beloved, does indeed take all of that energy and return it to your causal body, which does grow and grow and grow as the lilies of the field grow. Therefore, beloved, to espouse the will of God is the path of sainthood. And as Moria has said, it is the sacred adventure. When you see this, you will know that all things coming under the grand design, you are surely locked in to the diamond heart of my mother Mary. That heart being the immaculate heart, that heart being the pulsation of a cosmos. Thus, beloved, all things follow when you vow to do the will of God. And when you truly demand and cry out to the Father, show me what is that will, and are able to let go of pet plans and projects, you will be found called and sealed in the order of the diamond heart. I am your Jesus fairest rose of your heart. I am one with your Christ. I am in the center of the lily, the threefold flame that is the heart of that diamond chalice of Mother Mary. Therefore you see the acceptable flower that you bring to this calling is the lily which does represent the threefold flame. Hearts of love, I gather you, but I do not pluck you from the fields of life. I would see you become immortals yet upon the stalk. May it be so that the green stem upon the spine does signify that a group of pilgrims on earth one day in December of the year called 
1987 did come to a new and an ancient divine awareness through their own beloved a brother ascended. Behold, I am everywhere in the consciousness of God. Therefore, in giving my life, I cannot lose it. For he has found me and taken me all to his heart. I am one with Jesus, his disciple of the sacred heart. And I am, I am, I am giving my portion to form the diamond heart of Mary and Moria as the worldwide sign to every foe, every foreigner and enemy of Christ, thus far and no farther, the diamond heart of the sons and daughters of light shall prevail in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is done, and we accept it done this hour in full power. For God in us is the doer, and it is done. Therefore, at any hour until the midnight strikes, the coming of a new year and a new planetary karma, you may say, Beloved Jesus, my brother, my master, I will follow in the footsteps of the saints of the diamond heart. I will give the just portion of my life that not one, neither the messenger, neither a keeper of the flame, need be plucked of thee from God's garden on earth. I seal this Jesus with a gift of my heart, thy heart one. Behold, my Lord, I am with thee everywhere in the consciousness of God. And by that reality, my Lord, I know there is no death there is no grave, there is no hell, for the life triumphant has swallowed up the death of defeat. It is done. We are one. Never more to go out into the shackles and limitations of time and space. Jesus, thou art my all. I am thy all. And I do enter thy heart as thy bride, thy servant and disciple, thy friend. O Lord, take me where thou wouldst have me, into the highest heaven and into the depths of Hades. O Lord, let me serve thee wherever thou art, and one of these thy little ones is gone out of the way. In the name of the way, the truth and the life, Jesus, I am thine own forever through my daily step-by-step -step service in the order of the diamond 